beautiful friends welcome back to my kitchen my name is Anna and today I'm going to show you to make my very easy practically a no fail homemade meatloaf still tender juicy flavorful so let me show you the ingredients so we can go ahead and get started you're gonna need some meatloaf mix I'm gonna talk about this in just a second Worcestershire Worcestershire sauce however you say it. onion garlic eggs tomato paste some thyme oregano, some freshly grated parmigiano reggiano, milk, I have some panko breadcrumbs, and you're also going to need some salt, pepper, and a little bit of parsley. The first thing I'm gonna work on is on my onion and garlic. I personally like to chop mine very, very fine. I do it in my little chopper, just that way I don't have to chop for like hours and hours. I mean, it won't take hours, but it's a lot easier to do it this way, so I pretty much just mince it very, very well. I don't like to have big pieces of onion in my meatloaf. I don't think it's very appetizing and then it creates this like weird little pockets. I personally don't like. So all I'm gonna do is cut this into chunks so I can add it to my little chopper right here. Okay. Okay, I'm gonna chop this off camera and I'll be right back. My onions exactly how I want. I'm going to add a drizzle, just about a tablespoon of eggs, of, not extra virgin, regular olive oil to a skillet. I have that on medium heat. Now I'm going to cook my onion. So we're gonna add it to the hot skillet. This is going to soften the onions just a little bit so they're not raw. And it's also gonna end up with a much, much better flavor. So I'm going to add the garlic into my little chopper as well. I'm going to chop it, and then I'm going to add it to the onion mixture. So you wanna keep an eye on it, you wanna mix it around. I'm going to add the garlic. I had another piece of onion that I chopped along with the garlic. I just didn't wanna chop with the rest of the onion. So I added it in there. You wanna stir everything together. And now this is gonna cook for about two more minutes. While this is cooking, we are going to work on our binder or filling, however you wanna call it. So to a large bowl, we are going to add our eggs. It's gonna make the make them make the meatloaf really moist. Okay, we're gonna give this a quick with screws and everything kind of like mix this together. Very good. We are going to add the milk, the panko. Now you can either use panko breadcrumbs or you can use regular breadcrumbs. I like to use panko. I find that it gives me a much lighter um, meatloaf, but regular breadcrumbs will also work. You wanna add Worcestershire sauce. Now we add some tomato paste. Okay. Uh, so that much. You wanna give this quick little stir once in a while so nothing sticks and nothing burns. Okay, so let's add some oregano. Normally I would add dry, um, fresh oregano. Well, pretty much fresh herbs, but I don't have, okay, there we go. But I don't have any fresh herbs at the moment, so some dried herbs we'll have to do. Well, I only have, I do have some fresh herbs, but I only have parsley. Let me set this aside for just a second so I can chop some parsley. Okay, okay, my parsley looks good. I'm going to add all of this to my bowl. The onions are also looking good. Okay. So you wanna turn off the heat so they don't continue cooking. Add all of your fresh herbs. Okay. You wanna give this 
another quick stir. I like to mix my binder before, so that way we don't overwork the meat, because that's how you're gonna end up with a really tough meatloaf, and that's not what we want. Okay, this looks great. Add our fresh Parmigiano Reggiano. Just touch more. There we go. And this is gonna add again beautiful flavor. Now we're gonna let the onion kind of cool down for a second. When the onions are cooling, we're going to season this with some salt. Remember the Parmigiano Reggiano is quite salty, so you don't want to add too 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 much salt. We're gonna add some black pepper. This looks good already, so we're going to add our onion and garlic mixture. And last but not least, we are going to add the meat. Like I said, I'm using some meatloaf mix. It's pretty much half a pound of ground beef, half a pound of ground pork, and half a pound of veal. If you can find meatloaf mix and you don't wanna make your own, just add equal parts of ground beef and equal parts of ground pork to make about one and a half pounds of meat. Okay, you wanna get rid of any extra juices or anything like that. And now I like to mix mine with my hands. This is the best way you're gonna get everything really nice and incorporated. Just mix until everything's combined. Don't overwork it. Okay, this looks good. So you can see everything is nicely combined, but we didn't overwork the meat. Now that our meatloaf mix is ready, I am going to, wait, here's what we're gonna do. I have a baking sheet lined with some parchment paper and I also have a cooling rack on top. And I have a loaf pan because I am going to form my meatloaf. You don't have to do it this way, you can just preform it. I like, I like it to be kind of uniform and pretty, so that's why I'm doing it this way. So I wrap it in some plastic wrap so it's easier to remove the mixture. And now I add all of that meatloaf mix to my loaf just like this. And I press it down just slightly to make an even layer. You can also cook it directly in your loaf pan. I personally don't like it. I find, look, my oven's preheated. I, I personally don't like it. I find that it just gets too greasy. You have like pockets of like fat everywhere and it's not appealing, at least not to me. Okay, so this looks pretty good. Now we are going to transfer it to baking sheet. We remove the plastic, and you have a perfectly formed meatloaf. My meatloaf is formed, so I'm going to pop it in my preheated oven. I have my oven preheated to 350 degrees Fahrenheit. This is going to go in for about 30 minutes. I'm going to gather all of the ingredients for my glaze, and I'll be right back so we can make it, and it's ready by the time our meatloaf is done. We love it in the oven, and here I have the glaze. This glaze is so tangy and sweet, just absolutely delicious. Very simple, we're not gonna cook it. So in here I have some ketchup. I'm gonna need some brown sugar, which I'm going to add right into the ketchup. I have some white wine vinegar, and in here I have some onion powder, garlic powder, dry mustard, and a little bit of smoked paprika, which is gonna give it that beautiful, kind of like smoky taste. You can use regular paprika if you don't have it, but I do recommend the smoked. We're going to season it with a little bit of salt and a touch of pepper. Just a touch. Now we mix all of this together. I have my little spoon, we're gonna try it. Beautiful, tangy, 
sweet, absolutely delicious. So now this is done. You're gonna put it aside until you are ready to spread it on your meatloaf. My meatloaf has been cooking for 30 minutes. We have our glaze ready, have some mashed potatoes boiling. We'll have some potatoes boiling to make mashed potatoes. And this is gonna be glorious. So I like to add pretty much the whole thing all over. If you want, you can leave a little bit behind for whoever wants a little more glaze. They can add a tiny bit more glaze to theirs. Okay, just like so. Now this is gonna go back into our oven. I like to put it at 375 for about 15 to 20 minutes just until it's nice and cooked through. I'm gonna pop mine in and I'm gonna show you what it looks like once it comes out. My meatloaf was in the oven for 18 minutes. I just took it out about five minutes ago. I've been letting it rest. So you can see it looks smaller than how it went in. And don't worry, it doesn't shrink that much. It's because I had my very best girlfriend come over for lunch. So I cut off the ends. We had it for lunch. It was delicious. I'm giving this to my boyfriend's dad. He loves meatloaf and he loves my meatloaf. Um, not mean to brag, but it's pretty good. And so he says that he likes it with crispy edges. So I popped it right in the oven again. I turned on the broiler for about three, four minutes on high, and I got the edges kind of crispy. That's how he likes it. So I'm gonna cut two little slices. Well, I just had lunch, but I'm still gonna show you what it looks like. It's delicious. It's still really, really nice and moist, even though he likes his a little more, you could say overcooked. I usually like mine at 165. Once, the, once you put in a thermometer and hit 165, you can take it out of the oven. You can even take it out of the oven a few minutes. Mm, so good. A few minutes before that, because it's gonna continue cooking as it rests. Even though I cooked it to 170, look how delicious and moist it still is. I don't know if you guys can tell, but look, just look how moist it is. It's not dry, perfectly moist, perfectly juicy and delicious. Now, if you want, you can finish it off with a little bit of parsley. You have my mashed potatoes. You can do a little bit of parsley all over the top, just like so. And now you can serve yours. As you can see, I served mine with mashed potatoes. You can do some veggies, it's like salad, whatever you want. And this is absolutely delicious. I'm not gonna try any right now because I just had two slices and I am stuffed to the rim. I am so full right now, so I'm not gonna try anything. So if you guys try it, remember, written recipe on my website at intestinalizedrecipes.com. You will be able to find both the meatloaf recipe and the mashed potatoes recipe. This mashed potato, absolutely delicious. It's full of cream and butter, which makes it really rich and buttery and delicious. So make sure you check both the recipes out. I hope you like it, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye-bye.